every once in a while, I will go looking through Netflix or the recent releases of movies just to try and see if I can find some sort of diamond in the rough of animated movies. Something that didn't get any attention but is actually really good to the point that you wouldn't think it just by even looking at the box art or the screen grab. And I found such thing. In fact, I think I may have found what I consider to be the greatest hidden gem I've ever seen for an animated movie. Moon Guardian of the Moon. It's a name that it doesn't sound like it would be anything. In fact, the name sounds so generic that you would think it would just be some sort of throwaway movie. And that's what I was thinking when I first heard it. And then I watched it just to give it a chance. And oh my god, I could not have been more wrong. It is easily one of the best films I have seen in years. This movie came out in America in 2017, but in France, technically 2014, but really officially 2015. If I had seen this at either point, this would have easily been in the top three for either year. Uh, for animated movies. This is just absolutely gorgeous, and you're going to notice that from the very beginning. This movie is one of the best-looking films I have ever seen. Keep in mind, 2015, it looks just as good as anything Pixar or Disney are doing right now. How they did that, I don't know. Especially when it's a studio that's on a shoestring budget for modern animated movies. This was made at just $17 million compared to the typical $100 million of a Disney or a DreamWorks film. And it made $9 million. Apparently we here in America aren't the only ones that haven't heard of this movie. Which is a damn shame. This film is a visual treat from start to finish. If you watch it for nothing else than to just look at the beautiful set pieces, the original designs, the gorgeous coloring, just everything about it from a visual standpoint, is it, it's candy for the eyes. You will leave happy with just that. The story, though, is actually surprisingly decent, and the the setting and the creativity that p was put into it is amazing. You can tell that this was made with love and passion, and the creators were wanting to make something that they had always wanted, rather than just some generic paint-by-numbers studio movie. Again, unfortunately, it seems like, as with most passion projects, no one gave a crap, and it got thrown to the side. I just was amazed at how much I love this, and I really want more people to see it, because it's something that, unfortunately, is hidden. It seems like no one has heard of it. I, there are very few bits of information out about it. No one's seen it. No one's talking about it. And that's a damn shame. Normally, I try and weigh in on what you might like or what you might not and why you should or shouldn't see it. This is one of those movies where you absolutely should see it. If you like animation in any regard, you will love this. It has something for everyone. Beautiful CG. In amazing, fluid, 2D animation. There are four different instances that they use 2D, and it's not gimmicky. It, it actually fits in perfectly with the ideas and the narrative, and it, it, it felt 
amazing to see a studio use both styles of animation and make it fit rather than just be a gimmick. The only real downside I have to this is if you see the American English version, which if you're in the U.S., you're going to on Netflix. They decided to, for the American release, replace a few of the voice cast that originally did the movie dub in Canada with some U.S. celebrities and comedians, and it shows this was done as a last second thing because oh well it's an animated movie we gotta get them kids <laughs> ship me if you see the American dub about half of the cast was replaced by just random American celebrities, and it feels like they are reading from completely different scripts. The The main cast that wasn't replaced, uh, it, it's the same thing. They didn't change anything. They didn't edit anything. No, no, nothing is different. But the American cast that was changed, and thankfully it was mostly just side characters, you can tell that something isn't right. You can tell that this was not the original script they were reading from, and they had to hook it up for the kiddies. It, there are some moments where it is actually painful to sit through it, because you can tell they aren't being the character, they are being that celebrity or that comedian doing a shtick in, a, in an animated movie. I don't know why Hollywood insists on doing this, and I find it insulting on an intellectual level. That may be why no one here in America has heard of it, because even Hollywood or the distributors or whoever was in charge of it, they thought it was a throwaway film, so they just said, fuck it, and didn't give it any kind of advertising, didn't give it any kind of recognition, just threw it on a Netflix and gave it just the absolute worst sort of look they could think of. It, it, it upsets me, but, but that's... I'm going on a rant here, and I, I at the end of the day, I want to get it across. You need to see this movie. Moon, Guardian of the Moon, is one of the best animated movies I've seen in so long after the horrible year of 2017, where there was almost no good animated movies released. This just brought back a lot of what I love about animation. Just the creativity, the, the visual displays, the, the, just the, the love of the medium. And if you are an animation buff like myself, or you just like animated movies, it, it doesn't matter. You need to see this. You will love it. I can guarantee this. It will be a treat, and you will walk away with a giant smile on your face like I did. Anyway, this has been Math Machine, just talking and hoping you will go see this movie. Y you need to, for yourself. It is that good. Peace out.